So let's get started because I think we are behind on time a little bit. So we'll go, we'll go fast here. Uh, if you're here, it's because you uh, want to listen to their three tracks. So we're going to be talking about marrying Terraform and Argo CD and see what child will come out of it. Um, my name is Carlos Santana. I don't play the guitar, but I play Kubernetes. I'm a senior specialist SA at AWS, also a CNCF ambassador. And Nick? Uh, I'm Nicholas Mori, a developer advocate and recovering platform engineer from Acuity. Great. So let's get started with the storytelling. So um, I work with a lot of uh, end users in the enterprise business, and um, Kubernetes has a lot of tools. So you are in ArgoCon, we'll be talking about uh, ArgoCon, which is one of the continuous delivery tools. There's also our builds and integration tools, or our CI tools. But there's this one that uh, we don't talk a lot about, the infrastructure as code, which is the tools that you configure your cloud infrastructure tools or resources to work with Kubernetes. So we have this trifecta, right, of CI, CD, and then infrastructure as code. And everybody tries to do it efficiently and try to do it in an innovative way and solving issues and putting it in open source. For, for today, uh, we're going, this pattern is applicable to any of the infrastructure as code, cross-plane, CDK, Ansible. Uh, but for today, we're going to concentrate on see how do we make Terraform work with Argo CD in a better way uh, when we talk about Kubernetes, right? So who here have deployed Kubernetes with Terraform? Okay, a bunch of you, good. Um, who here have de deployed apps with Argo CD? Okay, good. You pass. Third one, who has problems with Terraform and GitOps? Okay, so you are in the right, right, right talk. Um, so when we work with Terraform, usually it's to create the cloud resources that we need for our Kubernetes cluster. For example, in a, in a cloud provider, myself, I work in AWS, a lot of folks use Terraform to create EDKS cl cluster, mainly a control plane. But since they want to do automa automation, everything, the platform team goes ahead and installs the add-ons, the helm charts that are needed for that cluster and the next cluster and the next cluster. And they install helm charts and add-ons such as external DNS, uh, the ingress controller, cert manager, load balancer. I have end users installing almost 40 helm charts from Terraform. And I think we can do better than that uh, in terms of managing helm in Terraform is kind of uh, a little bit difficult because you have uh, your TF state that lives outside the Kubernetes cluster, and then you have the state that is reconciling inside Kubernetes. So the idea is we want to move the Helm install and the Helm management and say which version of the Helm chart or the add-on gets installed, uh, what are the various uh, YAML files that get installed. You want to do that in Git, you want to do that in YAML, and you want to organize it by clusters. But the problem is there's some metadata that these Helm charts need, these add-ons uh, Helm, um, in Helm. Metadata such as the work, workload identity, uh, AIM roles, if you're familiar with URSA, uh, SQS uh, URLs for Carpenter, um, domain, na domain names for future insert man uh, external DNS, or uh, IP addresses that Nick is going to talk about for uh, NGINX, for example, external IPs. So that, yeah, it's like, but then how do we get those, that metadata into uh, Argo CD when we install the Helm charts that, that we want to put it there? We want to stop putting that information in Kubernetes or through Kubernetes installing the Helm charts, but we need something in the middle. And usually uh, people have different patterns and some folks have to actually have solved this um, from the research that we have done. They have done it, but they have not put it in open source or make it a pattern, repeatable pattern. So what we did was we created a, a GitHub repo, GitHub org, and we started putting patterns in there, me, me and Nick, on creating like how do we do infrastructure as code? How do we pass this metadata? So we created a, a org called the GitOps Bridge. Um, and basically the GitOps Bridge, what it does, it takes that metadata and it puts that metadata into the Argo CD cluster secret. And that's the cluster secret that the previous talk was talking about. That is the representation of a cluster or a remote cluster in Argo CD. So we put that information into the annotations, for example, of that metadata. And we also put the labels, which represent things about the cluster, like what is the environment, staging versus prod, or what is the region, for example, or 
um, which add-ons do, do, do I enable in this cluster? So there's different ways of getting that information from Terraform into that cluster secret. One of them, which have helped some organization, is put have Terraform use the Git uh, provider or GitHub provider and put the files in Git. Another one is uh, you saw the previous talk about using the Argo CD API to talk to it to create that um, secret, and we we want to show that example. Also, external secret. So when you have Hub and spoke, and you have like 50, 100 clusters that are remote that they don't have Argo CD, then you just need to create a secret. That's the only thing that you have to create. And external secret operator, it can help there also to create that secret if, if you have that pattern. And the last one that Nick is going to show a demo is Acuity can register clusters in their platform. And as they register that, that cluster, they will create the, the, the labels and annotation on that cluster into Acuity. And then the, the next thing is, and when we're using application sets, we're using the power of application sets, and Nick is going to show that on how we use application sets. But who installs the application sets? It's kind of the chicken and the egg. Um, we couldn't go any talk about talking about Terraform and Argo CD without chicken and the egg, but here it is. Uh, you use the apps of app patterns. So in this case, it's an app to deploy application sets. And in large organizations, they have problems managing so many app application YAMLs that they discover or they realize that the best way to generate these apps is using application sets in Argo CD. So we need the bootstrap. And you go with the same concept of like this, this bootstrap app is going to create the application sets. The same thing, you can use Git, you can use Argo CD, or you can go directly into Kubernetes API. The word is not perfect, but at least you're not installing the Helm charts from Terraform. And then the other pattern is, who manages Argo CD? If I need to tweak Argo CD, do I do it from Terraform or do I do it from Git? So Argo CD itself is an add-on that you can manage from Git. So let's take a look at the first demo. The first demo is I have an EKS cluster that is sitting in AWS. I just want to deploy the cluster with Terraform and install Argo CD, a seed Argo CD, and install all the Helm charts or all the add-ons through the GitOps bridge. So with that, let's show you a little bit of um, Terraform. Do not run out the door. I'm going to show Terraform. Um, so the GitOps bridge, this is, a, this is an example that we have. We have multiple patterns. We have Terraform and GitOps, and we're building the, the GitOps bridge. Uh, under Terraform, we have three examples, EKS with Acuity, EKS with Argo CD. Uh, Nick is going to show the other ones for the other cloud provider. I'm going to show the most simple one that is Argo CD is sitting inside the cluster instead of uh, in the Acuity. In here, um, as you can see, typically you create a, a VPC.tf, uh, that's normal, and then the EKS cluster, which is, uses this uh, module that is very, very popular where people do EKS. This is an open source uh, module, and you create your cluster like that. Um, and then we go into variables to make this example simple. We, sh we have here um, a variable called add-ons that then you select in here well, how many add-ons you want in this cluster. You want 10, you want 12, you want 13, you need, right? It's not that you want, but you need to install as a platform team, you're in charge of these add-ons. Maybe the application team deploys the app, but you as a platform team are in charge of the cluster and the add-ons on those clusters. So you will enable things like cert manager, uh, that you need that metadata. Uh, CloudWatch metrics, external DNS. In this case, I'm, in, I'm installing all of this. Uh, if you want to install Carpenter, or a, uh, in this case, I'm installing the AWS Ingress. Uh, what else? Um, metric server, Caverno. These are the open source ones that you can choose of uh, not putting it in here. Um, so we have uh, other ones that, but this, all of this requires some cloud metadata. So all of them you just put enable true or false. And then at the bottom, I have a few examples of open source, like Argo Events. Who uses Argo Events? Argo Workflows. Who uses Argo Workflows? A couple of you. So you use, you use them and install them for the apps team to, to use them. Uh, GPU operator, if you're doing AI. And then what you do is, with this, you, uh, let me go to main.tf, main.tf. You go, and we have a project. My team has a project called the EKS. Let me show you, I'm assuming, 
uh, the EKS blueprints. And um, anyone using the EKS blueprints? OK, a couple of you. So recently, we added this new variable, which I wanted to call stop Terraform from installing Helm charts using the Helm provider resources. But that was too long, so we enable, we make them create Kubernetes resources equals false. And basically says, do not do the Helm installation, but do the cloud uh, resources. So it will create the resources, give me back the metadata, the ARN role, um, the SQS URLs, like usually it's for IRSA. And then you enable all of them here. We have a bunch of them. The output um, I take into uh, cluster metadata. So that would be annotations. And then the labels um, on and off, or maybe the environment, if this cluster is dev versus staging, or the version of Kubernetes. Sometimes you need the version of Kubernetes in the Helm chart. For example, the uh, Kubernetes autoscaler, you need a specific image based on the version of Kubernetes. That's kind of tricky to do in Helm, so you put it here. So labels that help you group clusters and any, any other information. And then this uh, module that we created, it's a very simple one. It's called the GitOps Bridge Bootstrap. It installs Argo CD and creates the, the secret. So if we go to that one, it's sitting in GitHub in here. It's called, the organization is the GitOps Bridge Dev. We're trying to get GitOps Bridge because it's, somebody's parking on it. But this is the Terraform module that we plan to put in the Terraform registry. It uses Helm, so here's the the witness, uh, we use Helm, but it's only for the Argo CD seed uh, to install it if, you're, if that's your use case. If you use an equity, you don't, you don't need this. Um, and then you install Argo CD, and then you can use the Argo CD Terraform provider, or you can put it in the, in the secret. So in the secret down here, um, where is the Kubernetes secret? So I'll be talking to the Kubernetes secret, um, and I put the annotations, which are the metadata, and the labels. So with those two things in the cluster secret, we can use the application set cluster generator. Uh, anyone familiar with the Argo CD uh, application set cluster generator? A couple of you. So that's, that's what Nick is going to show. So basically, you Terraform apply uh, this, this folder. You get all the add-ons installed from Argo CD. And then in Terraform, the only um, thing that Terraform is in charge is creating, talking to the AWS API. But this small bootstrap is one of the patterns. Um, and as you can see, we have Argo CD here with all the add-ons installed, the 13 add-ons um, out of the box in a very easy way. So with that, I'll give it to you, Nick, to show the, the second part uh, of this demo. Let me show you. We are here. Go ahead, Nick. Thank you. So Carlos demonstrated deploying open source Argo CD into the same cluster that Argo CD is going to be managing. The next demo that I'm going to demonstrate is having Argo CD outside of the clusters that you want to manage. So this changes the deployment pattern slightly, but the, the premise itself should stay the same. Uh, so essentially, we've got our GKE cluster. So this pattern is cloud agnostic. It's you've got a Kubernetes cluster, and you've got cloud metadata that you want to pass to your applications. Then we have Acuity managing our Argo CD instance and connecting the managed clusters that we're creating with Terraform to Argo CD, as well as putting in that metadata into the label and annotations of that cluster configuration to make it available to the cluster generator in the application set. Then we ultimately use the Argo CD module in Terraform to create that initial bootstrap application. And this is always the fun part with bootstrapping, is that there's always that one application that you have to create at the start so that you can manage the rest of the applications from Git with Argo CD. And so we give that responsibility to Terraform to create that initial bootstrap application, and then everything after that becomes GitOps. So that's the high level. Let's go into what we're actually working with. So uh, we're talking about GKE, but the premise is the same. We've got a cluster created with Terraform, and I can zoom in a bit here. So we've got a cluster created with Terraform, nothing special there. We've got a VPC created, and we're creating a static compute address that we ultimately want to pass to an annotation into Ingress Nginx. So this is that cluster metadata or cloud metadata that Terraform is aware of and Argo CD needs. 
So Terraform becomes the source of truth for that metadata, and Argo CD becomes the consumer of it. Uh, so that's all the same. What comes next and is different in this one is that we're using uh, the Acuity platform to create our Argo CD instance. And this is uh, similar to having a management cluster that runs your Argo CD instance. So it's outside of the managed clusters that you want to actually deploy resources into. And then we've got our cluster configuration. So this is just as similar as the cluster secret for um, managing it with open source. We've got a, a cluster resource that we define um, from that variable that Carlos showed earlier, the uh, labels and annotations that we want to put on to that cluster configuration. And this resource also deploys the uh, QD agent into the cluster so that it can connect back to Argo CD. But it's all the same. We're getting that cluster metadata from Terraform and putting it into somewhere that Argo CD can get to it, which is the cluster configuration. Then I mentioned that Bootstrap application. This is uh, the Argo CD Terraform provider, which is currently managed or maintained by a member of the community. But we're using that to talk to the Argo CD uh, API to deploy that initial Bootstrap application. You could just as easily do this with REST calls to the API or using a local provisioner to call the uh, Argo CD CLI. So that's all the, the Terraform side of it. We, we've got our cluster metadata, we're putting it on our cluster configuration, and we're connecting that cluster to Argo CD. Let's see what that looks like then from the application uh, set side. So here is that application set that we've been talking so much about here, where we're using the clusters generator, which We'll go even zoom and enhance, right? Uh, so we've got our cluster generator, which has values. These are arbitrary values that we're defining for that, uh, for that generator, where we're saying this is the name of the add-on chart or the add-on that we want to deploy. This is the version of that chart we want to deploy. And this is the repository to pull that chart from. So all of the chart information is still in, in Git. It's still GitOps. Um, just like you would hope it would be. Then uh, we use selectors to choose which clusters get which, uh, get which add on So you saw all of the enable add-on name examples in the Terraform configuration. This is where the selector is checking for that label to determine if we should deploy that add-on to this particular cluster. And so the next piece of special sauce here is that we actually have three cluster generators in this example with a top level merge generator that's going to bring all of them together. And the advantage of doing this is that we can take that label that we used uh, to define what environment that cluster is in and use that to mutate which chart version, which add-on version we want to deploy to that particular cluster. So in this example, the uh, default chart version is uh, 1.13.1, 1, and that gets deployed to um, any cluster that has the environment label, typically dev or you know, non-staging or prod. And then we've got two other cluster generators, one that's searching for the environment staging and is changing which version of the add-on we want to deploy to that particular set of clusters. So we've got a slightly older version, and then prod's running a really old version classic story, but this is how you can determine which version of an add-on you want to get deployed to which set of clusters using the labels that we put on that cluster configuration. Then we set the name and the sources deterministically, but the next special part is that we set the values files that we want to pass to that add-on chart. And we do it in a very particular way to add layers to these values. So first off, we say ignore missing values files. If we haven't set a specific values file that overrides the defaults, then don't worry about it, just continue on. But the important part here is that we have three layers of values files. We have the environment's base, which is the default for any cluster that's going to get that cluster add-on, is going to get these values for that chart. Then we layer on top of that the values file that is specific to the environment that it's running in. And we're pulling that from the, can I move over? 
We're pulling that from the metadata from the cluster configuration here. So we're saying from the metadata.labels of the cluster configuration, determine which environment, use that uh, values file for that add-on. And then finally, we say if we have a cluster that's a little special, it's a unicorn, it's not like the rest of them in that environment, you can add overrides for that add-on using this values file that is specific to that cluster. So if there's nothing specific to that cluster, just don't create that values file and it'll use what's determined from the base and the environment that that cluster is in. And then finally, we take I was talking about getting that cluster metadata that's determined by Terraform and putting it into the values file. We finally got into that point. So that annotation that Terraform is adding to the cluster configuration with the IAM role that we want to run uh, to pass to the values of this Helm chart, we're adding it here from that cluster configuration. So the application set cluster generator pulls that information from the cluster configuration, and we can use that in templating the applications. So we'll step back and see what that actually looks like. So I've got my Argo CD instances here. If I go to my GitOps bridge and I look at my cluster configuration, we can see that this cluster has all the labels and annotations determined by Terraform on it, which includes you know, things like which annotation or which add-ons we want to uh, deploy to it, the cluster name, anything that we want to use in the applications. And then ultimately, that looks like this, where we've got our uh, bootstrap workload here. That, uh, wrong application, I want bootstrap add-ons. So we've got our bootstrap add-on, which is uh, that application deployed by the Argo CD provider in Terraform, and then it creates all the application sets. So there's like something like 30 or 50 in here, but you'll notice only one of them is actually producing an application, and that's because that's the only one that the cluster has a label saying, I want this one deployed to this cluster, and that that application is taking advantage of the metadata that we put into the cluster configuration to take something only known to Terraform and use it in the values file for that Helm chart. I think that's the whole demo. Uh, and now, so that's the whole premise. The, if you come out of this talk with, with anything, these are really the four things that I want to distill it down into. First off, don't use Terraform to manage Kubernetes resources. They have totally different reconciliation loops. Terraform. I don't know, I maybe run it every couple weeks, maybe when somebody wants something different. Kubernetes is constantly reconciling its desired state from, or reconciling the live state from the desired state. So you shouldn't manage Kubernetes resources with Terraform because they're, they're more likely to change. This is why we have GitOps. Then to step back, Terraform is the source of truth for certain cloud metadata. The, the cluster name, the IAM role, the load balancer IP is not known to Kubernetes inherently. So Terraform is the source of truth for that information. Then you should leverage application sets to extract metadata from the cluster configuration. So Terraform knows this cloud metadata, puts it in to the uh, cluster configuration, application sets extract that and use it in the applications. And then finally, it's good to group your clusters by label so that you can determine everything in this environment should get these add-ons with these values. Miss anything? No? So uh, the call to action is to come try it out. So we've got this repo that we were poking through for this demo. It's available uh, on the GitOps bridge GitHub organization. We highly recommend you try it out. The goal is to establish a set of patterns that is cloud and provider agnostic so that ideally the infrastructure's code has metadata that your GitOps needs. Come try it out. We've got Terraform and Argo CD examples, but we're looking for Pulumi and Crossplane and uh, frankly, Flux could come in and use these patterns. And one more thing here, very important. I, I brought my dad, he's going to take a picture with this. Well, <laughs> yeah, he's very proud of me. Thank you, Dad. 
And then, sorry, finally. Yes. We have a workshop at the end of the day today at 3.50 that goes over these patterns in a hands-on way. So if you want to come and try this out for yourself, uh, you get to spin up your own Argo CD instance, get some clusters. We're going to use dev containers. They're really cool if you haven't tried them yet. And you can actually get hands-on experience with this. Um, yeah, try it out. You can get hands-on experience today on this. This is new, a new project. And please rate this talk. It gives us good feedback. We're looking to improve. And please add me on LinkedIn. I love connecting with people. Thank you.